Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and 9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hey everyone, welcome to Moms in Real Estate. I'm Angela Fazio. And I'm Kristen Cantrell. And today I'm so excited because I've gotten the pleasure to personally know the, our guest today. So I want to welcome uh, Sarah Lossing. And she's going to talk about crushing limiting beliefs, which is a great topic. So timely for so many people. So Sarah, welcome to the show. Get us started. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you for having me. I'm super excited and I've really enjoyed getting to know Kristen as well. Um, so yeah, my name is Sarah Lossing. I live in Chandler, Arizona. I um, have three children. I've got a 16 year old son and two girls, 13 and 10. Um, and my husband and I will be celebrating our 25 year anniversary this November. That's so awesome. Super excited about that. Yeah. Um, I've been in real estate for just over seven years. Um, I've been on a team before, and now I've been a solo agent for about four and a half, almost five years. And uh, just excited to be here and talk with you ladies. So if you are if you are watching, some people are on iTunes, so they can't see you. But if they're like, how were you married? How are you married for 25 you years? You don't look like you're old enough to be married <laughs> you guys, for 25 years. <laughs> she started dating her husband at 16. How cute is that? I love yeah. it. I love yes. that. I got married at 20 and then, yeah, we, we, we held off on having kids right away, but I did, I did have my son when I was 29. So that's nice. oh, so a few you guys years, a lot of time together. It was like you guys yeah. for a long time. I love it that. It was that's great. So yeah. We, we traveled a bit. I know you mentioned my kids' names and um, even our, one of my favorite cities is Vienna. So my daughter's name is Vienna. Um, yeah. We oh, love I love traveling it. For, so we, Axel. Axel Vienna. It's Axel. Piper. Yes, I love oh, that. Oh wow, those Aren't are awesome so names. Cute? Yeah, that actually gave me chills. That's a I know. good job with the names. <laughs> I mean, like the two. And I yes, Axel kids. is spelled like Axel Rose. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. Um, okay, so I'm like actually really. I I love. I get asked a lot from agents that are on teams that are transis transitioning into sol being a solo agent, like. That transition is hard. So share with us, how did you do that? So yeah, it, it is a, a hard transition. At the time, it just made sense for me. My team was actually leaving the brokerage that I was at at the time. I was getting a lot of business from corporate relocation. So um, I knew that that would support my business that first year. And essentially I became you know, my own buyer's agent. <laughs> I was the buyer's agent on, on my solo team. So um, it, was, it was a tricky transition when you're used to using someone's systems that is so fine tuned and then trying to incorporate that as a solo agent and following along with the systems that you know that works, but you're building them your, yourself. So that is a challenge for sure. But if you were to go back in time, let's say you're like, okay, I'm going to be on a team for, you know, a year or two years, whatever. Um, like what things would you do to make it easier if you had that mindset to, to be able to build your own business once you left the team? Is there any tips you would give somebody? Yeah. So I, I think it's a great idea for a new agent to join a team. Because as we all know, you get out of real estate school, you don't um, really know how to do transactions. So if you, when you're part of a team, you um, have people that you can go to for every single question you have um, and really just start to pay attention to what systems they have in place, um, what um, lists they use and, and follow along with what makes that team successful. So that when you do go out on your own, you have a nice basis to start with. Like, how to manage your CRM, um, mm -hmm. how to manage your transactions, what type of support you might need. So yeah, I think and speaking of really CRMs, important. yeah, speaking of CRMs, if you're on a team, that's awesome. You might be on there forever or you might not be, but get your own database. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Keep Make sure database, you maintain your so. own database. Yeah. And even yeah, as easy and as, and even as easy as just um, like having an Excel spreadsheet where you keep all of your, all of your contacts on that at the bare minimum. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's still something that I work on all the time. And I don't think I realized as a new agent um, how much the real estate industry is all about, you know, setting goals for yourself and, you know, personal growth and, mm -hmm. you know, growing your business and how so many people within the real estate industry are so focused on, on a growth for themselves, their business. And um, you always have that you know, community around you of people that are really striving to be better people, better business owners. And so, yeah, I, I have that, you know, goals myself that I'm looking to achieve. Um, and at some point would like to even mentor new agents to, you know, ease the learning curve there myself. That's awesome. And and I want to jump right into, because I'm so excited about your background and, yeah. <laughs> and I want to jump right into that concept. Talking about personal growth is cr uh, crushing, limiting beliefs. Give our audience just a little bit of background of, of why you've had to experience that firsthand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we kind of talked about the pivot I did from a, being on a team to a solo agent. I've had a couple other major pivots in my life. Um, my husband and I were both raised in um, a religion that was very restrictive, um, did not encourage college education, did not encourage growing a business or, or any kind of wealth development. So we were both raised in the Jehovah's Witness faith and made it, it was a long journey <laughs> um, with that in mind. I uh, started after my son was born about 16 years ago. And then back in 2014, we made the decision uh, together to uh, leave, officially kind of leave that whole aspect of our life. So it's, it's a community that you pull yourself away from. You kind of get cut off completely. And we had to rebuild um, our community. And that's when we moved to Chandler. Um, shortly after that, I got into real estate. And that's been, you know, huge for me. It was the hardest, it's one of those hardest and best decisions <laughs> of your life. Um, but as you mentioned, like we're talking about crushing limiting beliefs. And as I project goals for myself, I still see that there are, you know, these belief systems that I kind of hold on to that can really limit my growth. And um, you kind of don't realize it until you see where you want to be. And then you see, you know, you're always exactly where your belief system is pulling you towards. So mm -hmm. if you're not in, if you're not oh, reaching your goals, if you're not creating, um, seeing where your goals are, and that's not where you're at right now, it's usually because there are some belief systems that deep down inside that's holding you back. Wow. That was the oh. wisest statement I've heard about mm -hmm. limiting beliefs that you're <laughs> always going to be exactly where your mm -hmm. limiting beliefs keep you. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's absolutely true. So I know everyone has them. And the problem with limiting beliefs is we can't see them that easily because mm -hmm. if we right. saw them and they, if we saw something like literally limiting us, I don't know that we would hang on to it. So how do you discover what those are? Like, how did you realize, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, this, and I, there's obvious ones, like, for example, mm -hmm. um, not having the encouragement of wealth building. And I get those, but how mm -hmm. did you figure that out? And what did you do to not only identify it, but crush it? Right? Yeah. So yeah, I, you know, I surprised myself a lot of times. I was really nervous, like coming off of a team, being a solo agent, but have been able to build um, a pretty solid business. Um, I, you know, do between six and a half and maybe $9 million in production a year. So I surprised awesome. myself. I'm like, that's pretty, pretty good uh, where I'm at right now. But when I look at where my goals are, when I haven't met those goals, that's when I, I have done some, you know, soul searching and trying to figure out what's causing that. And I had a nice kind of cushy life as a stay at home mom for a number of years. And sometimes maybe that, um, comfort of being a stay-at-home mom um, can kind of draw you back. And so when I realized that I have this goal of creating a successful real estate business and growing a team and where I see maybe I'm not reaching some of the goals that I have set for myself, maybe like I, I've looked back and say, you know what, uh, maybe my first commitment is that I do want someone to take care of me. I do want to have the comfort of um, being a stay at home mom and, and are my daily actions that I'm taking um, reaffirming that. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is so good. 
<laughs> we're having lunch. That is the end of it. So, so I mean, think of, think about that. What she just said. Okay, listen. Now, what I heard is you got to take action outside of your comfort zone so that you can discover mm -hmm. that you can. I guess what I do is I look around yeah. and, and if somebody's doing it, I think to myself, well, I, that means I can. Yeah. If absolutely. somebody's done it, that means I can too. Mm -hmm. And so I go surround myself mm -hmm. with people who've yes. done it. And then yeah. magically, and or not magically, then it happens. Magic, happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's I awesome. I think even back to like the birth experience, we're talking to moms here. So I I knew I wanted to do like a natural birth. And I'm looking back and thinking, there have been women throughout <laughs> all of history <laughs> yes. that have managed this feat that we all think is like impossible, right? Oh my <laughs> like gosh. I could never do that. <laughs> and um, I, I, I had to surround myself with women who had all done, you know, natural births. And that's kind of where I was at that time frame. If you want to, if you want to be a long-term breastfeeder mom, you know, you want to oh, be that's around right. I was in a that, group. <laughs> yeah. I was in a breastfeeding group. So you really want to surround it was hard. yourself with women that you're like, they've done it. I can do that too. I have the power within me to accomplish that. And yeah, I, um, I've had now three natural births. The last one I begged for an epidural and just didn't get one, but I've done it. <laughs> you know what? So I, I tried to surround myself. I read this book and it was just stories of women having natural births. And I was like, I just read all of them. And then I got to the hospital and I was like, give me an epidural. I, now. I, I did not, I did not succeed. So yeah. I did with my second, but, not on purpose though. I know I have the funniest yeah. story about epidural because, um, when I have very, very fast labors, very fast. Like my last child, I, I, my water broke at seven 30. I had him at nine 15. It's that it was like mm -hmm. that fast. And so when we got to the hospital, I was already like ready to give birth almost. Right. And so I said, I want an epidural. And the, the anesthesiologist said it's too late. And my husband's yes. big <laughs> and, 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 he took him out, the, took the anesthesiologist out through the hall and said, you give her a baby epidural. You give her a baby, a baby epidural one. right now. And they gave me a baby epidural. <laughs> like just a little one. Oh, <laughs> uh, I yeah, just remember so when they would right me mine. Like oh, sorry. There is a Go lot. ahead. Say that, Sarah. Well, I was just saying, like, if you see somebody else is being successful, like, you know, you have it, you can do it, but you do have to surround yourself with the people that are going to help you get there. And, um, and they might be the ones that kind of identify what those limiting beliefs that you have are that are holding you back, all those fears and excuses that you're using. Um, your actions are going to reinforce those, whether they're true or not. <laughs> so you might need I to be around people that can call you out and tell you, you know what, you can do this and this is how. Mm -hmm. And when you're not taking action, you're just reaffir reaffirming your belief systems, whether you can or can't. That's right. And one of the things that um, I try to stay really cognizant about is if there's somebody speaking into my life that is taking away from what I want to do, like, I, I hate to say it, but my mom does this sometimes. Well, I'm, Angela, you're 50. Why are you still working so hard? Because I love what mm -hmm. I do. Like, I don't want to hear that. I've also got to push away the voices that speak against what I'm trying to accomplish because what I'm trying to accomplish is really fun mm -hmm. and it's important. It's, it's blessing people. Yeah. So you've got to surround yourself with people who help you and push away the voices that drag you, drag mm -hmm. you down. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I think like identify what actions you're taking that are either supporting your goals or not, and then figure out why you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> Why, why are you making the calls that you're, that you're doing or why aren't you <laughs> to build your business? Do you have, do you have any like, um, like podcasts that have helped you or books that have helped you or anything that you're like, Hey, if you're struggling with this, go do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I love, um, you know, you're constantly hearing like kind of like, I want to say like self-help books or books that have changed people. Um, yeah, there's a book I'm reading right now by Debbie Ford called The Right Questions. And I've really just found some gems in there as far as identifying, um, you know, what your actions are, are and what your goals are. And if they're not in line, then there might be some things you have to look into as far as your belief system or, or that. So yeah, that, that's the book I do. I do listen to podcasts. Um, all, you know, we're always in our car in real estate and mm -hmm. I've 
kind of almost stopped listening to music unless I need a real like um, pump myself up or something. <laughs> I have a playlist, you know, the playlist that you listen to on the way to a listening <laughs> appointment. I've got those, but but when I'm in wait, my what car is, for a long what's time, what's on that playlist? Yeah, what's on your playlist? Go back, go oh back. Wait, what's the listening I playlist? I literally just the other day I was driving my daughter <laughs> to a cheer competition, and I'm like, do you want to hear what mommy uses when I need to get pumped up? And it's yeah, I've got like ACDC on there. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's awesome. I knew song. it. I knew it. Uh, yeah, I've got some Eminem in there. Oh and, uh, my gosh! <laughs> I thought you I were like gonna do thought... the punching, punching in my car. You know, yeah, I try to pump the myself punching. up. So. <laughs> You're um, that girl. Hold on. <laughs> I, I'm like, like on the way to your next listing presentation, you better do an Instagram story. I'm I'm not <laughs> kidding. Like I need to see. I, I don't know why I imagine you listening to Metallica. I don't know why. <laughs> what else is on there? Give me one more that's on there. Eminem, A C D C This girl is on fire. I, I, mean, I know it. This girl is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> um gosh, what else is on there? Um I think I like what's her name? Rachel. Patton, like the fight song, you know, that like fight song. This is our fight I've got song. The no, song yes, that's sometimes. a good yeah. one. That <laughs> Oh my God. I love it. Oh my God. I never had a playlist on the way to a listening appointment. I don't ever get creative with reels, but I see one right now. Like I, <laughs> I, Sarah, I you just got to make a reel. Sarah, you have to, this is your I don't opportunity know I, to I'm become like, like I don't know real if I've ever famous. done a reel before. I don't know we'll if do I've ever done you. a reel. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You would probably go viral with a with a playlist to an, a listing appointment. I know. 100%. Somebody's going to do it. Girl, I'll have my girls teach me how to do reels. <laughs> it's oh, easy. You can do it. You can do it. Mm -hmm. So tell us, um, why don't you leave the audience with maybe just like, uh, some inspiration on like, what are your goals? Like, tell us, tell us like, what do you, what are you looking forward to in your business right now? So yeah, my goal this year is to do over 10 million in production. I've never production. I've never hit that um, spot before. And it was my goal last year and I didn't meet it. So um, that's now my, again, my goal. I want to do over 25 transactions and long-term goal. I would like to build uh, a real estate team um, of, you know, help, like I mentioned, kind of help newer agents learn some of the skills that I've learned as far as how to care for your clients, how to make them feel that I've had a client one time tell me that I know you have other clients, but you make us feel like we're your only one. So I feel like I really nice. gained some really great skills in how to um, serve my clients to a higher level. And I would love to be able to teach other agents how to do that and really make it a great experience. So yeah, I'm looking forward to a really great 2020 and um, I, I've identified some things that I need to I think you should look forward to 2022. For myself. 2022? <laughs> Did I say 2020? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I was like, like, that's a really don't, old podcast. Don't bring us back there, okay? <laughs> no. I can't even like say that it's because we write it on our checks because we don't do that anymore. Gosh, I know. <laughs> Going okay, so last Sorry. question, last question. Yeah. What has to change in your business? for you to break okay. that $10 million ceiling? Mm -hmm. So I need to get on the phone more. I have that fear of talking to people on the phone, um, just reaching out and asking for business. I have a fear, I think, of asking for business. Um, and then, yeah, I have a new goal, another goal of being um, out there on video and probably letting people see my face more on social media. <laughs> I post pictures of my kids and not me, but really sharing uh, the real estate experience with people in my sphere um, and showing them what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I feel like being out there and then also just asking for business. Well, you should have absolutely no fear of showing your face because you're beautiful <laughs> and easy to talk to. Thank so you. you should just crush that one right now and don't even give it a second thought. Oh, thank you. You ladies are so encouraging. I love uh, kind of tracking you on social media and um, seeing your, your podcast. And I'm excited that I'm able to be on it today. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on today. And if you guys are listening and you guys want to save the date, we have our third flourish event coming so up. Excited. Yes. And it is in April. So it is April 20th through the 22nd. Mark your calendars, go to our Instagram, um, see the, all the information and get your ticket now. Cause it's going to be a blast. It is. So thank you again, yeah. Sarah. I Have heard great, great things day. about it. I'm excited. Oh, I'll you're come. coming. <laughs> 
Yes, you're coming. It's fantastic. Honestly, I'm going to drag you. <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.